Hello my friends, welcome to the last episode of our series on beginners aquariums. If you've been following all the videos so far, you should be feeling more confident in setting up and take care of your aquarium. Today we talk about one of the most fun parts, choosing the fish. We'll introduce the 10 best fish for beginners, ones that are not only easy to care for, but also bring color and life to your aquarium. Welcome to PSK Aqua. Finally, let's see if I can remember more than to fish names. These episodes are filling my head with more fish than water in the aquarium. <laughs> You'll see, even you will learn a few names. Shall we start? The first fish on our list is the famous guppy or Poecilia reticulata. This small fish comes from uh, South America and can be found in various habitats from rivers to calm ponds. Guppies are known for their vibrant colors and how easy they are to care for. Ah, guppy! Even I know them! They look like tiny rainbows! That's right, Rick! They're very popular because of their variety of colors and patterns. Also, guppies are life bearers, meaning they give birth to baby fish instead of laying eggs. So, guppies have a daycare inside the aquarium, right? <laughs> sort of. If you don't separate the babies from the adults, they might get eaten since guppy don't protect their youngs. As for water, they prefer a pH between 6.8 and 7.8 and a temperature between 22 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. They are quite hardy, making them ideal for beginners. What about feeding? Are they picky? Not at all. They eat flakes, mosquito larvae, brine shrimp and even plant-based fruits. They're omnivorous, so they have a varied diet. Next, we have the plati or Chiphophorus maculatus. This small, colorful fish is from Central America and is another great choice for beginners due to its thickness and easy breeding. I get it! Another fish that multiplies like rabbits! That's right, Rick! Like guppies, platics are life bearers and can fill your tank quickly if you don't control the population. They prefer slightly alkaline water with a pH between 7 and 8.2 and temperature between 20 to 26 degrees Celsius. And are they calm in personality? Yes, they're peaceful fish, great for community tanks. They get along well with other species as long as they're not too aggressive. As for feeding, they are also omnivorous and accept a wide variety of foods. Looks like even platies would feel at home in my aquarium. All that's left is for the fish to clean the glass for me. Now let's talk about the Neon Tetra or Parachetodon inisi. These fish are from the Amazon basin and are famous for their electric blue stripe and red spot across their body. They're small, but bring extraordinary beauty to any aquarium. Blue and red? It sounds like a fish celebrating Christmas every day. Christmas, okay, something like that. They're schooling fish, so it's important to keep them in groups of at least six to help them feel secure and less stressed. They prefer uh, soft, slightly acidic water with a pH between 5 and 7 and temperature between 20 to 26 degrees Celsius. It seems like they're a bit fussier with water, huh? Yes, they need good water quality, but they're still easy to care for as long as you maintain the tank properly. They're omnivorous and will eat both dry food and live food. They're perfect to community tanks because of their calm and peaceful behavior. Next is the friendly button dwelling fish, the Corydoras. This little catfish is also from South America and is loved for being the cleaner of the aquarium, helping to pick up leftover food that falls to the bottom. Wait, so this is a fish I need to do the dirty work? Hey Rick. They're not the cleaners of the aquarium. They don't replace regular uh, cleanings and maintenance, but they do help keep the substrate clean. 
They like to live in groups of at least 5 to, and prefer water with a pH between 6 and 7.5 and temperature between 22 to 88 degrees Celsius. And what do you feed a fish that's already picking up crumbs? Even though they eat leftovers, they still need proper food like sinking pellets, live food like mosquito larvae and sometimes vegetables. They're peaceful and can live in community tanks without any problem. Now we come to the famous betta. This fish from the Southeast Asia is known for its long fins and vibrant colors, especially the males. Ah, the betta, the boxing champion of the aquarium, right? Yes, Rick. Males are very territorial and shouldn't be kept together, but they can live peacefully with other calm species as long as the tank is spacious and doesn't have long finned fish that could trigger aggression. They prefer water with a pH between 6.5 and 7.5 and temperatures between 24 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. What about breeding? Their breeding is different from any other fish, only compared with, with goramis. Betas build bubble nests on the water surface uh, where they lay their eggs. It's beautiful. They need a protein-rich diet with live or frozen foods like mosquito larvae, plus specific pellets, but they eat everything. Next we have the molly or Pocilia sphenops, another life bearer on our list. Native to the tropical waters of Central America, it's known of its ability to reproduce easily and its hardiness. Another fish that fills the tank with babies? Exactly, Rick. Mollies prefer slightly salty water with a pH between 7.5 and 8.5 and temperatures between 24 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. They're peaceful fish but need space as they can grow up to 10 centimeters long. And what about their diet? Are they picky eaters? Not at all. They eat flakes, vegetables and live foods. They're great for community tanks as long as you keep the water parameters in check, like all the other fish. Next we have the Chifophorus heleri or sword tail. These fish came from Central America and have a unique feature. The male have a tail that looks like a sword, hence their name. They're very popular for their beauty and hardiness, making them an excellent choice for beginners. Sword tail? So, you mean I have a samurai fish in the tank? Yes, yeah, it's a samurai. <laughs> The male's long tail looks like a sword and it's used to impress the females. As for water conditions, sword tails like alkaline water between a pH between 7 and 8 and temperatures between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius. They're active fish and can grow up to 12 centimeters. And what about breeding? Are they easy to breed? Very easy, Rick. Like guppies and platics. Sword tails are life bearers, which means the babies are born fully formed and swimming. However, be careful with overpopulation, especially if you don't separate the males from the females. Hmm? And do they get along with other fish? Or are they always at war with their swords? They're generally peaceful, but should be kept with only one male per tank, because males can be territorial with each other. As for feeding, they're omnivorous and happily eat flakes, vegetables and live frozen food. If you want a visually striking and easy to care for fish, sword tails are the great choice. Next on our list is the Zebra Danio. Originally from Southeast Asia, this fish is very active and hardy, making it a common choice for beginner tanks. Its most notable feature is the horizontal stripes that runs along this body, hence the name Zebra. Stripes? Are you telling me I have a fish with zebra patterns? Like the ones we see on safari? <laughs> exactly the same, Rick. <laughs> but instead of black and white, Zebra Daniels have silver and bluish stripes. They're schooling fish, which means uh, they should be kept in groups of at least six to feel comfortable. 
As for water conditions, they prefer a pH between 6.5 and 7.5 and temperature between 18 and 24 degrees Celsius. Their extremely torrent or temperature changes, which makes them great for beginners. And what do they eat? What's on the menu for zebras? They will eat just about anything, from flakes, pellets to live foods like brine shrimp and mosquito larvae. They're omnivorous like the other fish we're talking about. Plus, they're very resistant to diseases, which is a big plus for beginners. These guys seem tough. And how big do they get? They grow to a maximum of 5 cm, which makes them suitable for small tanks. They're great companions for community tanks since they're calm as long as they're kept in groups. Now we have the black tetra or Gymnocorimbus ternetzi. This fish comes from the Paraguay River Basin in South America and it's very recognized by its black fins and dark grey body. Black tetra, got it. This one will give the tank a mysterious look, right? Exactly, Rick. Very mysterious. They have a distinct appearance that contrasts well with more colorful species. They're very hardy and adapt to various water conditions, making them a popular choice for beginners. They prefer a pH between 6 and 7.5 and temperature between 22 to 28 degrees Celsius. Are they friendly or do they have a moody attitude to match their color? No, they are peaceful, but they can be a bit territorial if the tank is too small. Like other tetras, they, they should be kept in groups at least six to prevent aggressive behavior. As for food, they are omnivorous. They eat anything. How long do they live? With proper care, they can live up to five years. They grow up to five centimeters and are great for community tanks, especially when paired with species that aren't too aggressive or territorial. Lastly, we have the Harlequin Rasbora. This fish, native to Thailand and Malaysia, is known for the triangular black mark on his body, which gives the name Harlequin. Harlequin? Sounds like a clown. Do they bounce around the tank? No, Rick, nothing like that. They're schooling fish, so they, you should keep them in groups of at least six, so they feel safe and happy. They're peaceful and perfect for community tanks. They prefer slightly acidic water with a pH between 6 and 7 and temperature between 22 and 28 degrees Celsius. And what do they eat? Maybe they eat clown popcorn, right? Popcorn? No popcorn. They are omnivorous. They eat anything you give them. With a good diet, they can grow up to 5 cm and live up to 6 years. Are they easy to breed? Breeding in an aquarium is possible, but can be a bit tricky. They spawn on broad leaves, so it's important to have a calm, well-planted environment to encourage them breeding. And with that, Rick, we finish our list of the 10 best beginner fish. If you're starting with an aquarium, now you have a great idea of which species are easiest to care for. Wow, I have more fish in my head now than childhood memories. But hey, this was fun. I learned it a lot, and I think everyone watching did too. Oh, glad to hear that, Rick. Now, if you like this series and want more aquarium content, don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, comment and share with your friends. Remember, fish keeping is fun but also a responsibility and even though these fish are easy to care for, they still need good care. Exactly! And if I manage to learn all this, I'm sure you can too! Until the next adventure! Don't forget to subscribe and watch all the other videos on the channel. Here we have an encyclopedia of everything you could possibly want to know about aquarium keeping. Help us keep the channel going. And that's the end of this super complete series on how to start with aquariums. If you've been following along, I wish you the best of luck with your tanks. Well, 
I will sign off by saying thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you.